And here, I'm joined now by Dirk Schirek, banking expert at the Tech University Darmstadt. And my first question is, can we still trust our banks? Well, it's very difficult to trust your bank if you do not know uh, how to evaluate toxic assets in the banking uh, balance sheet. So uh, we have at least doubts to trust them. And hopefully, we find solution that uh, trust comes back uh, into the market and uh, will help us to refinance our banks. Do you think trust will come back uh, with the introduction of bad banks? Well, first of all, it's a, the cheapest solution we can find for the taxpayers in the moment because uh, we can uh, at least uh, separate these toxic assets, how to evaluate these assets. We will find some 20 years' time and look uh, what happens over the next 20 years. And, and maybe when we're able to evaluate them, then in the end we know uh, how costly it was. That sounds very risky to me. That could mean that the taxpayer will have to deal with quite a burden in 20 years from now. Uh, indeed, there is a threat that uh, taxpayers uh, have to pay uh, the burden of uh, today's situation in 20 years. But uh, on the other side, uh, it's a bet on the future. And uh, if the future is bright, uh, we do not have to pay anything in 20 years. Okay, well, I don't think Germans are that prone to betting. Uh, that's more Anglo-Saxon. The US, for example, has a, a pilot project right now selling toxic assets to private investors. Could that be something for Germany? I think it uh, could be a solution for Germany in two or three years. Uh, in the moment, we have indeed the problem to evaluate these toxic uh, assets. And uh, because it's very difficult to evaluate, and we do not have any market, the papers are very illiquid. And, uh, of course, German investors are known for their risk aversion. And uh, give them another two years' time, and uh, we will find a market for these assets in Germany, too. Okay, well, before we continue, let's talk about uh, the other side of the coin. The financial crisis has destroyed banks across the globe. And these days, when consumers think of banks, many think of toxic assets and state rescue packages. It's hardly reassuring. So they're looking for alternatives to conventional banks. Many have found them in institutions known as ethical banks. And these banks tell their customers exactly what they're doing with their clients' deposits and how the money is being invested, usually in environmental environmental, social and cultural projects. We visited an organic bakery that got a loan from Germany's biggest ethical bank, GLS, and dropped in on the bank itself. He usually works at his desk, but today Joachim Weckmann is inspecting the bread himself. In the early 1990s, the head of the Berlin bakery, Merkisches Landbrot, went 100% organic. 6,000 loaves of bread are baked here every day. Everything comes from organic farms and no additives are used. Business is good and the bakery is growing. A few years ago, Merkisches Landbrot needed money for new factories and modern ovens. So Weckmann looked around for a creditor and he found GLS Bank. His firm was able to borrow around a million euros. GLS Bank supports farmers and works with them and encourages exactly this kind of production. That's one of the reasons we managed to get decent loan conditions. We also enjoyed a level of service I've never experienced in my professional life. And I've been self-employed since I was 20 years old. Some 500 kilometers to the southwest, GLS Bank has its headquarters in Bochum in the Ruhr Valley. They do things differently here. The building is simple. Solar cells on the roof provide climate-friendly energy. Inside, there are no teller windows and no frills. Instead, natural materials create a tranquil atmosphere. GLS is successful even now in the financial crisis. Last year, total assets grew to over a billion euros, almost a 30% increase on 2007. The Mutual Savings Bank focuses on social and environmental projects. Every investment has to meet certain ethical standards. The bank's own investment advisory panel meets several times a year to decide which companies will be accepted into the investment portfolio. What's not allowed are businesses dealing in things like nuclear power, weapons or child labor. We clearly don't compromise on things like that. This man is one of the 62,000 clients who likes the bank's clear stand. In the wake of the financial crisis, many uneasy investors have sought alternatives elsewhere. This architect already has a checking account at GLS. 
Now he wants to invest. Of course he wants to earn money, but it's nice to have a clean conscience in the bargain. And he likes the personal touch. You really are treated as a person. When you call, there's a real human being on the other end of the line. At most banks, that's unfortunately not the case. You have to slog through a string of different robot voices before you finally get someone. Here it's not that way. You get fast service and they remember you. Still, the architect isn't sure if the suggested investment, a fund for microloans, is the right one for him. Would that be the right investment for you? Basically, yes, but I'm not convinced about the 3.5 to 4 percent interest rate. What don't you like? It's really too little. I'm not the financial expert here, but there are investments that promise a better return. The bank CEO Thomas Jorberg hears things like that all the time. Naturally, he understands customers' desire for higher interest. But what's important to him is that the interest rates are sensible and the investments secure and the money has to be put to good use. If I were to say the money's not important, that the rate of return is the main thing, then the real economy wouldn't matter. And we're now seeing the results of that kind of thinking. That's why we say it does matter, that it has consequences. How I invest my money has implications for society as a whole. The chance to make that difference is what we offer our clients. Back in Berlin, everything worked out for the bakery. Joachim Weckmann favorably impressed the bank's credit advisors and received his 1 million euros at a very good rate. What makes that possible is the fact that more than 10% of all GLS investors have agreed to take little or no interest on their investment. It's their way of supporting sustainable, environmentally sound business practices. Dirk Schirek, banking expert at the Tech University in Darmstadt. Uh, what we just heard there, it sounds as if uh, being ethical also requires uh, being happy with less, i.e. less uh, return on investment. Doesn't sound too business friendly to me. Maybe it's not that business friendly, but uh, what we observe indeed is that lots of asset managers um, are now in, in the marketing phase for products uh, labeled as sustainable investments and uh, lots of these products uh, show returns uh, comparable to typical assets uh, and uh, products uh, which uh, perform within the market. So is this something that you'd be interested in investing as well? Yes, it indeed uh, the idea to invest uh, with a comparable return and feeling a bit better. Uh, so, and feeling better when investing is, is of course, uh, good for, for the mood of the people in the moment. Of. Okay, but you can also feel a bit better investing in so-called green funds, uh, which are offered with normal banks. What's the difference? I think uh, the problem of green funds is how to define what's green, what's sustainable, and. Uh, so a chemical corporation like BASF is a member in uh, some, some indices uh, of, of uh, stocks that are sustainable. So it maybe it's, it's the most sustainable uh, chemical corporation, but uh, is a chemical corporation sustainable at all? So uh, it depends on how an investor, how a uh, banking client uh, perceives uh, sustainability by, by him or herself. Now we've seen that uh, the financial crisis sent out shock waves uh, throughout the world. Is there a chance that uh, the financial world, the banking sector, has learned its lessons and will change to the better? Hopefully. Hopefully it, it changed to a better. I think uh, responsibility from the side of the employees in a bank as from the customers from the client side uh, will rise at least for a couple of years. Uh, how it uh, will develop over longer periods of time we have to look for. Dick Schirek, thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome.